You know, guys, I am floored as I, I and I try very hard not to even look in and pay attention to what's really going on um, among believers and a lot of these all star, I'm going to call them all star pastors. And, you know, it's not even just them. It's all across the board. You can't even say it's just mega pastors or some. OK, because all of them are not like this, but most of them are. Um just people who are in the office of religious leaders on a whole are really acting up. But guys, yeah, you've got the all-star um, preachers and teachers that's doing their thing. And then you have those that's, you know, trying to come up and doing whatever. But I'm here to tell you the highest, richest church leader that you can think of guys i'm trying to tell you whatever they're trying to build for themselves because a lot of people are trying to build their kingdom and their glory right here in this earth and no matter how fabulous it looks guys it ain't nothing but a shanty it is a shanty when it comes to what god truly has for us Remember, there are a lot of servants that are on horses and, 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 and leaders and those who are worthy that are walking, princes and such that are walking. And guys, I'm here to tell you, don't get, do not make your goal be about trying to get position. There's nothing wrong with success, but God's success does not turn you into a darkened vortex where all you want is power and all you want is praise and all you want is to be lionized and all you want is money and all you want is things. And when God blesses you with one car, that's not enough. You think you deserve two. And when he blesses you with two cars, you think you deserve three. And when he blesses you with a house, you feel like you need a bigger house. And when he gives you a bigger house, then you feel like you need three and four and five houses. Houses. Come on, something is wrong with that. If you have a bunch of houses and you have someone that's still living in some uh, some place or they don't have any place to live and they're living with other people, you are greatly mistaken, whoever you may be. And guys, you know, I understand that as people get higher up, it's harder for them to reach everybody in their ministries. You understand that? You know, remember when Moses was in the wilderness and he was taking care of the children of Israel and he got so frustrated because every minute something was going on <laughs> with the children of Israel and Moses got frustrated. You know, he cried out to the Lord, like, Lord, are these my kids? You know, this was when they got tired of eating manna. And if you ever read that, I want to say it's Numbers 11. That story had me cracking up. It was a sad story of how things ended up. But whew, when Jesus, when, when God struck the children of Israel, why they had that chicken in their mouth? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So anyway, there's a portion in, in the word where Moses was very frustrated. And so he spoke to his father-in-law and his father-in-law, um, I'm sure by the wisdom of God told him, Hey, delegate some people that can help you deal with the problems of the people. So everybody's not coming to you all the time and whatever uh, your delegates cannot deal with, then it gets to you. And so this has been adopted in many churches. And while this was godly wisdom and in the right setting and when the right people, it is needed, right? You find this whole setup it's really around a person that does not care about people. There are a lot of leaders. They don't want it. They don't care about the congregation. They don't care about the flock. Okay. And it's always about whisking them off like Michael Jackson. They don't want to be bothered. And guys, I, I'm sorry, but you can carry your own Bible. When do you reach to this place in your walk as a leader? That you don't carry your own Bible? Guys, I'm sorry. That's just plain lazy. And that's way too much. That's just way too much getting to the head. You can carry your own Bible. But there's this thing where people are lionizing and they're putting these men and women in a position that is very dangerous. It's called idol worship. That's what it is. 
Okay. Nobody was carrying Jesus's stuff. He sat down with them. He reached out and he touched that leper. He took the time to turn around the, 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 the woman with the issue of blood that reached out and, and, and touched him. And he turned around and said, who touched me? That's how in touch he is with people that even in the crowd, he is sensitive to any, to, my gosh, he was sensitive to her, to her need and to her. She pressed, he turned around and acknowledged her in the crowd. But guys, you find a lot of leaders that's war, they're, they're operating like Merlin, the magician. You know that there's this whole around them. Guys, that man or that woman uses the bathroom just like you and I. They put one leg in their pant at a time just like we do. And you've got to take your eyes off of man and put it to God. You've got a lot of people in these churches and the ministries. You're getting a lot of signs and wonders, guys. But they don't have power. They have, there's a lot of lights. And I'm trying to tell you, when there's a need for lights and there's a need for the, the smoke machines and all these things, it's because there's really no power. Keep them lights on and take all that those illusions and the stuff that they have in the club, put that man or woman, take all that extra stuff off and see what they're really about. Jesus did not need to be in a certain lighting. He did not tell the people to come out at night. And then he just had a fire going that illuminated on his face and spoke as he was on the mountaintop far away from everyone. And he didn't have the disciples whisk him off. Okay. He was up front. He was close because he's the real deal. And guys, this illusion and this thing of delegating folks. Yes, I understand it. But you have people who have about exactly 20 people in their church still delegating. Okay. Acting up early. I have seen where this man was, the man, people were laid out on the floor and he was walking on them because he said the Lord told him that he could not walk on regular ground anymore. So he can walk on, apparently he can walk on God's creation because God, when God made man, when God made us, he said it was good. So these people have brought themselves to a place of being abased where they can be walked on by someone who says that they're holy. And if you're not in your word, you're going to lay down on that ground. If you are and let that man walk on you, if you're not in your word, you will sit there and go drink somebody's water while they're washing themselves in some sort of a, a, a bucket. It's not a bucket. It looks more like this, this large um, tub barrel thing. That's what you're going to do when you're not studying the word of God. When you are just following people and following signs and wonders and lightings and a mic that makes certain types of sounds. And he's up there wearing your clothes. She's up there wearing your clothes. And why do I say that? Because a lot of these individuals are living off of your money. You will look just as fantastic if you had a uh, 2000 and even if you just 200 people giving you money we are all equal in Christ do you know when Jesus returns and we're standing before the judgment we're standing before the throne not one of them is he going to call to speak for you you hold value to him that you will stand for yourself you're going to give an account and he's given you and I something to do. But too many people are becoming starstruck and awestruck. And when God pulls the covers back on these people, right? It's like, oh, it's a roach. Oh, no, it, it don't matter. Oh, we forgive you. Oh, oh, okay. We do need to forgive one another. But that man or woman need to sit down just like everybody else and get it right. But what do you do? You put the roach up there. 
Oh, it sounds like I'm being disrespectful. No, let's talk about what a roach is. Sneaky, secretive. You don't see them. They'll just come out when you don't want them to come out. I don't have roaches. But there's a point where I have seen some, but I don't have any. I haven't seen roaches for many, 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 many years. But you don't need to have roaches to know what they are like. They're in dark, moist places. They scuttle. They're inconvenient. They're dirty. They're hidden. They're in cracks and walls. You're not really going to see them out in broad daylight. So just as the Lord speaks about wolves in sheep's clothing, there are some other things that I can use as well. Rats, roaches, love to be in moist areas. And so when the discovery is made, I'm here to tell you that any exposure and any scandal that comes out on anybody, guys, whether you're a celebrity or you just got caught by your family, something comes out on your regular local preacher. I'm here to tell you the Lord spoke to them long before that in secret and they wouldn't stop. But what happens is people become so awestruck and their pupils are fully dilated that they have no discernment, no wisdom. Oh, we forgive you. Put you back up there. No, no. This man or woman has a problem. And especially when it's sexual sin, especially when it's been more than once. No, they need to be delivered. And you, oh, we, that person is supposed to be given every opportunity to be delivered by the hand and the power of the Holy Spirit. But if you stick them back up there, they have to now fight with that issue and now try to find a better way to hide it. But people think because you place them on this platform, you allow this stuff to happen, guys. It's time for us to look to God. You have to make appointments just to talk to them. They won't even talk to you if they're standing right there. They have this entourage around them. That's straight garbage, guys. Because they don't talk to you, but Jesus spoke to you. And brought you to salvation, spoke to your heart. He cared enough. You think about how you got saved when you were in those dark places. The Lord came and got you and he speaks to your heart. And you don't have to make any appointments to talk to the Lord. There's nothing in the word that says you have to go through this before you can talk to me. And even in the old days when Moses used to speak to God for the children of Israel, it's because they were too terrified by his voice. Yeah, guys, the Lord God, he was willing to speak to them. But when they heard his voice, they were terrified. And they said, Moses, they said, you talk to him for us. But we have a God. Where we can run to him and we can talk to him and we can pray to him. Through his son, Jesus Christ, that is our only mediator, guys. And all Jesus says is follow me, come to me. All you that are, are, are burdened and heavy laden, take my yoke upon you, learn from me. But no one is doing that. They're not going to God, they're going to people. You're attracted to the gift and the anointings that God has placed with these individuals. And so you start to worship the creature more so than the creator. But my whole thing is if God comes and talks to me and I can pray to God, he, he's given every last one of us that freedom. I'm not about to be getting in queue to talk to a man or a woman who sets these things up where they don't even want to talk to you after church. Their entourage is right up there talking to them. I mean, you know, blocking them, keeping people from talking to them. Come on. Whisking them off. To, uh, come on. Guys, stop falling for the okie doke. 
You are God's creation. It's time for us to turn to him. Because you see, when God opens your eyes and shows you who you are in him, it's not pride. It's just now I understand. I don't need to stand in line till my ankles swell to talk to somebody. I don't need to make a to book 90 days out to talk to anybody because I have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And too often you you God's children are focusing on the person that just happens to work there and not the CEO. You have today's churches, they're telling you, <laughs> it'd be just like you work somewhere, guys, and you have a regional manager. And the CEO gives you his number and say, hey, come see me anytime. Come talk to me anytime. And you got this supervisor or CEO or manager telling you that you can't talk to him unless you talk to me. When the CEO gave me his card with his number and I can reach out to him. And you standing here with your short tie and wrinkled shirt telling me that I can't talk to the Lord or I can't talk to yet. Yeah, Really, I can't talk to God myself. I need to come to you and I need to stand. In, why would I be standing in line and, and waiting forever for you to invite me into your office to talk to you when the CEO, the person that owns all of this and then some. If he's given me his personal number and he told me I can reach out to him, I'm not going to be sitting here wasting time trying to talk to you. But that's what a lot of God's children are doing. God has given you access to him. And the way you're going to know who you are is to study the word of God and to ask the Lord to open up your understanding that you can comprehend his word, then be led by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you're going to always be chasing these people. Who's telling you you can't talk to them. Oh, you can't talk to them. You can't give them no water. Someone's carrying their water because this water came from the wells of Bethlehem. Please, come on, guys. And I'm not trying to be funny, but one thing I'm glad about, and I've always had this disposition. And I get this from my father. When I see my brothers, it's the same thing. We're just not impressed like that. We're not trying to impress nobody, and we're just not impressed. Even if you got stuff, so what? And... And we don't sit and brag on our family and what we have and who knows who. We're proud of one another. And, you know, we, 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 you know, we give each, you know, hey, good job and congratulate one another. But, you know, we don't sit around just talking about, hey, let me tell you what we got. And we don't care what you got. And it breaks my heart to see people being hurt and being wounded and falling away. Do not allow any of these leaders, I don't care who they are, to put you in a position where you are searching for them first before you search for God. Study your words so you will not be led astray. Study your words so you know the difference between power and signs and wonders. Study your words so you know who you are in Christ. So they can't just tell you anything. Guys, when we have pastors that's walking on people, we got pastors that can put their foot and push a pregnant woman in her belly, supposedly because a child is a demon. When you have these pastors that can sin and do all kinds of crazy stuff and then turn the table and, 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 uh, deflect from fault and, and people are saying, Oh Lord, this is a man and woman of God and just let them do what they want to do. And they're up in the pulpit right after they don't rape the child. Come on guys. No, there is a danger in that because you open up your church to a spirit spirit. 
It's just like with Vashti. When Queen Vashti did what she did, she was removed. She refused to go into the king, right? And so she was removed. And what did they say? If you keep her in that position, what she has done, refusing to come to the king, this will spread like wildfire among all the other wives. So what do you do when this pastor is in the pulpit, sleeping around, having been caught in a bunch of stuff, doing a bunch of different things? This female pastor is doing a bunch of nastiness and things of that nature. And, and bashing men and bashing the authority of, of families and all this stuff. And she's doing what she wants to do. If y'all just let that go, that stuff spreads like wildfire in homes and in families. When you have an imbalanced head and you stay under that, that stuff falls into your home and your household. Listen. I'm going to go set your sights on things above. Mortify your flesh, pray for understanding, wisdom and discretion. And I talk about this because this is my pet peeve. It's my pet peeve to see people that love the Lord being destroyed by people in ministry. It breaks my heart to see people who have a fire for the Lord going to church and they get their fire snuffed out. And suddenly they become some hush puppies. And it's all about, it's all about auxiliaries and it's all about groups and it's all about being with this group and that group. Oh yeah, and let's throw God in here somewhere. Let's wear Jesus shirt. Yeah, we're good. God is good. Don't, there is nobody on this world and this earth that has died for you guys and given a moment of offense, they'll walk away from you. But this is who you will build on. The word of God says, if you build your house on sand, it'll fall. And when you build your, build your foundation on man, it will fall. But if you build your foundation on Christ, you will stand strong. Only he will still be there under you. I mean, not under you, but you know, keeping you. He is a sure foundation to keep you standing strong. I'm trying to tell you, get out of these places with these nasty leaders with attitude problems and can't keep their, their, keep their sexual sex drives under control and can't keep their attitude under control and they can't behave themselves. Walking by you, not speaking to you, being disrespectful, saying whatever they want to say. I'm trying to tell you that if they have no rule over their own spirit, they cannot lead you. You understand me? If you're a person, you're just going to walk by me and not speak to me. And I'm trying to speak to you and you're not talking, you're being nasty. And then you got to get with, you know, the old, uh, you know, uh, the booger crew and y'all acting up. Oh, no, no, I'm not in high school. I am a child of God. You and I, we are a part of a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. Let them keep their muddy little hands to themselves, guys. Come up out of that. But if you find that they are petty, he, the leader won't talk to you. And then they send the minions out and all these things. And they get in groups together. Guys, a sure sign of a coward. Cowards is that they come in groups. They cannot speak to you directly. And if you ask them directly, they deny. A man or a woman, I don't care what their positions are. Listen to me carefully. If they have no rule over their own soul, meaning they don't know how to speak to people, they don't know how to listen and hear anything, they don't know how to have a a healthy exchange. They have no control over their sexual drive. They're always in some sex scandal and trouble. If they have no rule over their own soul, you cannot lead me. You cannot instruct me. You have no rule over yourself. And you need to have that certainty in who you are in Christ because the word of God tells you that. We are not better than one another, guys. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. 
And that's why I always tell people, please don't give me a title. Don't call me prophetess. Don't call me, oh, don't give me any of that. And I'm not being funny, guys, because I know that's just what people do. Call me by my name. Because we are one in the Lord. We are here to encourage one another. We're here to uphold one another. And we're out here to get the lost who are lost, but where are they going to? Once they get saved, they naturally want to go to church. And the churches has become a slaughterhouse. It's become a chop shop. They just take what they need from them and leave the scraps somewhere. What is going to happen to these souls? What's going to happen to them? Who is going to teach them? We have to be in a position to be telling preaching the gospel and things have changed a lot is online why because people are misbehaving in churches not all now there are a few that they are actually about the things of God but the word of God is getting out there and while this is a big world guys you can make a difference in your community however you are led by the Lord we are his royal priesthood. We're his chosen generation. We're his peculiar people. Stop being afraid of being alone and being rejected and not being in the group. Jesus was not in the popular group, but he hung with those who were in need and those who had the same cause as far as he was teaching them to follow after him and to reach out to the lost. And that should be enough for you. A lot of times why many of God's children have so much time to be hemming and hawing about who's not calling them is that you are not busy. You're not engaged. Find out what God wants you to do. The very least you know, he wants you to tell people about souls, tell souls about him. Witness, do some good, find out who has needs, who needs what, hand them a track, tell them about the Lord. Some of you, you already know what the Lord wants you to do. Get busy. When you're busy doing God's work, you do not have time to be looking at who did what. When you find that you are, you have your eyes on what the you, they did in the past, guys, something is still out of place. You need to find out what that is. But I want to encourage you to continue in the things of God. We are not greater than our master. That's what it says in the word. What they did to Jesus, they will do to you and I. The rejection, they're going to do it to you and I. And it's always going to be the, the, the big wigs and whoever that's going to be talking and coming against you. And you need to have confidence in Christ. When it gets down to it, if it's just you and Jesus, why are you not satisfied, guys? Why is that not enough? Why is that not still a joy? Because we're not connected to him. And many of these churches tell you to connect to man. Guys, it's time to reestablish our relationships with the Lord. Reconnect the right way. Pour out what you've always known and what you've always thought was the right way. And study the Bible. Read it. Read it. Read it. There's a lot of people that's reading the Bible, but they're not reading the Bible. There's a lot of people that's getting word, but they're not getting the word of God. They're reading the Bible. They're filled with deceit and disobedience and guile. So they can't get anything out of it. And if they get something, it always happens to match up with their unruliness. I recently found out from my father not too long ago that my mother was a maroon Correction, In Jamaica. Not my mother, Maroons my grandmother. Were a group of people, they fought for freedom for the slaves when Jamaicans were enslaved. And I began to understand my persona and the, the persona of my brothers and even my father. Fearlessness. I was that way before, but even more so now with God. By his power, 
Because people need to be set free from the bondage. The new and improved, not even improved, but the new pharaohs of this time. Egypt 5.0 is here. And the, and the pharaohs are a lot of these religious leaders. That God has revealed to them truth and said, let my people go and they won't. So those of us that he has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. It's not just for us to be out in the darkness like, see y'all, you got to go back and get them. And I'm not talking about busting into churches. No, we don't need to do that. We speak the truth of God. You do the things that God has told you to do. And watch him do the rest by his power. You only need to speak. You only need to demonstrate the power of God. And the way you demonstrate the power of God is by living for him. By shining that light. By being the light. And by being fearless. And not afraid. Stand fast in the liberty wherein you have been set free. And be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage, guys. Have a wonderful weekend.